Using a combination of Markdown and Jekyll to write blog posts is pretty simple yet powerful, but if you want to include images or videos or songs in your post, it can seem a little bit tricky. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how to include all three in your posts. Any server these days can host images, video, sound files, etc., but they tend to be pretty heavy files, by which I mean that they weigh a megabyte or much more. Our focus in our work is on keeping everything light and text-based, so instead we farm out the resource-heavy work of serving up these images, video, and sound to rich companies who have the infrastructure to do that kind of serving easily and quickly. So here is Adam, the text editor, and a local version of the Jekyll blog for my students, waiting for a new post written in Markdown. In Atom, I click on the Posts folder and type A to add a new file. I follow the typical naming convention for a post by typing out the date and the title, separated by hyphens, and finishing with .md. Then I type in the metadata, surrounding it by lines of three hyphens each. Note that the title and author here are in lowercase letters. Throughout this post, as you can see, I'm using this word hotlinking because that's what we're doing. When we add an image in Markdown, we give it an address on another website, thereby telling the browser to go over there and grab it. When you grab images from servers that aren't yours, that's called hotlinking. So I add a little text, save, and reload the page. Normally you'd have to save, stage, commit, and push, but I've skipped those steps here. So here we see my new post, and I can open it. And here you can see the text that I've just typed in. The next step is taking a photo we already have and putting it on the internet. If your photo is in a Photos app or something like that, you may have to drag it to your desktop first. But in the browser, I go to imager.com, which is a website that lets you anonymously upload images that you can then hotlink. I click on the New Post button and drag my image onto the web page. Imager uploads the image and makes a web page for it. I can skip giving it a title. None of that matters. All I want is the address to the image itself. So I hover the mouse in the corner and choose Get Share Links. I pick this text associated with BB code and I copy it. Now back in Atom, I type out the markdown syntax for an image, which is an exclamation point, and then the description of the image surrounded by brackets. Then, inside of parentheses, I paste in the address I got from Imager. This is a bit picky because I still need to delete these IMG tags surrounding the address, so I have to delete these little parts with the brackets. And then here I'll shorten the description a little so it all fits on one line. Save and reload, and the image shows up. I have things set up special here so that the images always show up on the right side and are half the width of the post. But you see that what we've got here in between the parentheses is an address to the image on the internet. If I copy this address and paste it into a new tab, I get the original image. So if I move this line of markdown to the top of the post, the image now sits next to the text. And I'll paste the text a bit here to fill in the post. So that's images. What about YouTube? I have a link here to a video I just put up. I click on the share button and then on the embed button. It gives me this iframe text to copy and paste into my markdown. An iframe is basically a mini web page inside a web page, and in this case, that mini web page is playing a YouTube clip. Now if I go back to my post and reload, the video shows up, but look how it's too wide for the blog. I can change that by adding a line above and a line below what I just pasted in. So here you see that I'm pasting in this, this div code and a div is an arbitrary block of HTML. But by surrounding the iframe with it, and then adding these two classes, embed-responsive and embed-responsive-16x9, 
I'm telling the website to resize the box automatically and keep it at a 16 by 9 ratio, which is about what you expect from HD videos you shoot with your phone. Now if I reload, the video is the same width as the post. Using a sound file is a bit easier. I recommend uploading the files to SoundCloud. Then, just like with YouTube, you get a share link, and you choose Embed. You copy this one line and paste it in. Reload, and the song shows up. Because of how SoundCloud creates the iframe link, you don't have to add that embed responsive div code like you do for video. I'll add a little text here between the video and song just to give some spacing. Save and reload, and that's it. Again, it's important to farm out these heavy files to companies that have the infrastructure to serve them up quickly. If you would rather use Vimeo than YouTube, the process is similar. If there are sound sharing sites you'd rather use than SoundCloud, it's the same thing. Similarly, for images, there are other sites like Photobucket that also allow for hot linking. But the point is that your images have to get on the internet somehow, and that doesn't mean that they're in your iCloud or Google Photos or Facebook. You need to put them somewhere that gives you direct access to the image, image itself with a web address so you have something to put in your markdown. As a last note, you should always have backups of your images, videos, and sound files, should Imgur, YouTube, or SoundCloud disappear, of course. That's it. Hope it all works out for you. Thank you.